There is a difference between the macro enforcement of Sharia and the micro enforcement of Sharia. From the time you say you are enforcing Sharia in a land, that's macro. And you therefore have to deal with the problems I raised in my lecture today. But if the macro is not possible, because that banking system out there is too powerful, we can't shut it down. You're living in dreamland if you think you can shut down that banking system. Yeah. You're living in dreamland. If the macro is not possible, then we say the micro is still possible. And the micro does not pretend that we are enforcing Sharia. <laughs> no. The micro is that we are practicing Sharia to the extent that it is possible for us at the micro level. And we say that that can better be accomplished in small communities, not big, and outside of the cities. So there you have my Muslim Kampung. For our listening audience outside, Kampung means village. A remotely located Muslim village with a small population comprised of people who are people who want the Sharia. No one objects. So there's no need to force it upon you. We all want Sharia. We'll have to organize ourselves as a jama'ah. And to be a jama'ah, you have to have an amir. And you have to give the pledge to obey the amir. And when you give that pledge, you must keep it. If you break that pledge, out you go. The Amir will then enforce the Deen on the members of the Jama'ah. The Amir will have a Shura for consulting, consultation. And so this is not one man dictatorship. Now, through a process of consultation, Allah says, Wa amruhum shura bainahum. He says, Wushawiruhum fil am. Through a process of consultation, the Amir will conduct the affairs of the Jama'ah. Even with this limited application of the Sharia, there will be no banks. Not in our Muslim village. Out, oh, we don't want you. Even with this limited enforcement of the Sharia, we will not be using ringgit. No. We will use dinar and dirham in our micro market. And if there is a shortage of dinar and dirham in the market in Medina, what would they do? What money would they use? A hundred years ago, even a schoolboy would answer that question. Schoolboy. Today, a hundred years later, knowledge has fled. And ignorance is so profound, it's like the fog in Los Angeles. Nobody can answer that question. <laughs> Today. <coughs> Korma. If there was a shortage of gold and silver coins in the market in Medina, they would use korma, dates, as money. For some people that's a shock. Oh my gosh! Can you actually use dates as money? They've lost 1400 years of their history. Vanish, gone. Because of modern education. 
The hadith is gold for gold if a transaction involves an exchange of gold for gold or silver for silver or wheat for wheat or barley for barley or dates for dates or salt for salt once it is like for like it must be equal for equal and it must be hand to hand a cash transaction cannot be credit credit haram if it's not it's riba said Muhammad what is common to all six two precious metals and four commodities of food consumption is that they all use as money all use as money in the market so by analogy if we are in Java and we have a shortage of dinar and dirham we'll use rice as money not nasi baras is it Baras is called Baras. Baras. And if you're in Cuba, Cuba, Fidel Castro's Cuba, and you have a shortage of gold and silver, you'll use sugar, gula, money. Okay. So already in our, I mean, the secular educated fellow from the with a PhD from MIT, he won't be able to understand this. So just leave him, leave him by himself. Yeah. Leave him with his PhD from MIT. Uh, but the rest of us will understand that this is money which intrinsic value. Not money which is determined by Soros, George Soros, you know him? <laughs> uh, and they can, they can change the value of money as they want. Yeah. And as the value of money falls, they make a killing. And the massive transfer of wealth from the unsuspecting masses to a global predatory blood-sucking elite growing ever richer while the races of us become imprisoned in permanent poverty this is micro the micro